You don't always need a partner to feel and to experience sexual pleasure. And actually, it really does start with knowing your own body and your own mind. All right, everyone, it is interview time. And we are here in Santa Cruz, California, recording with Charlene Douglas, who is in the UK. Yes, across the London. East. She said London. In London. The technology is wild. <laughs> Hopefully, the technology gods will be on our side. This episode is all about orgasms and masturbation and sex toys. And it is uh, coming from Charlene Douglas, who recently released the book Come Closer Everything You Ever Wanted to Ask a Sex and Relationship Therapist. So we are going directly to the expert for this topic and this conversation. Y'all already heard a little bit about Charlene in the intro, in the bio, but Charlene, welcome to Shameless Sex. And we always start with the same prompt. Can you please tell us and our listeners a little bit more about how you got to where you are in the field of sexuality? Yes, absolutely. So as you said, my name's Charlene Douglas. I'm very much a Londoner and I can hear it. The more I hear you guys speak, I'm like, I'm such a Londoner. I can hear my accent so clearly now. Um, but yeah, so I uh, worked with young people for many, many years um, as a sort of sex advisor or sex relationship advisor. And I realized many years ago that a lot of the young people that I worked with had the same kind of issues as people that were adults. And then I went on the journey of becoming a therapist, a psychosexual therapist. And some people in the UK recognise me from TV. I'm on Married at First Sight UK. Um, and the rest is history. I talk about sex for a living. So absolutely enjoy it. The best job ever. It is. <laughs> it right? really, it doesn't feel like work. Wait, what? I didn't know yeah. you were. Okay, this TV show is, I wonder if we can get it in the US. It's Married it's, at um, First Sight. You do. Yeah. So you, I think you guys have Married at First Sight. America, US, that's yes. quite popular. Yes. Um, but Married at First Sight UK is shown on, is it Lifetime? Oh, that, okay. so maybe like Amazon yeah. or something. Okay, I'm going to look it up I think so. in the UK. Yeah. Wait, so were you on it? You're on it as an expert or were you on it to try to get married at first sight? <laughs> I actually don't know. <laughs> Definitely is the expert. So I, okay, I'm, good, I'm okay. the sex <laughs> She's like, I, wouldn't, I don't think I'd do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's funny actually because people always ask me like, would you ever go on like as a kind of like contestant? I'm like, mm, no. Yeah, that sounds dangerous. I think, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, people on that show probably need your expertise. So it's good that you stay in that pocket. Uh, yes. So we're, well, we're excited to have you. And, and we know Thank it's you. late there, too. So you're you're amazing uh, already. And your hair is beautiful. Please Thank look you. at us on YouTube if you're, if you're not. <laughs> if, if you can't, that's OK if you're driving. But Charlene's fabulous. So that being said, I love London accents, too. I can usually, by the end of the show, I'll, be, I'll probably be able to tell you what area I think you're from. Let's do okay. it. Maybe off air okay. just in case I'm wrong. At the end. <laughs> at the end. Yeah. At the end. So uh, obviously your book, which is everything you, which it was come closer, but everything you ever wanted to ask a sex and relationship therapist, which everything like that's, that's amazing. And I love this for you and about you. And so what I want to know is what are the common problems women in particular face when it comes to orgasms? Because that's a common issue that we receive as podcasters. Yeah, I think so. For a lot of the women that I work with, the issue is wanting an orgasm to please their partner. And the work that I do with women is to say, actually, let's take your partner out of this and let's look at what you need to be turned on, you know, what does it for you? But we also look at some of the kind of maybe not so sexy things as well. So we're looking at, you know, their the belief system around sex, if there are any issues around, you know, their, in terms of their upbringing, past relationships, religion, et cetera. Like what is in the space that stops them from really enjoying the moment and allowing that sexual charge to build to get to the point of orgasm? So with those challenges, let's go with the one that you spoke to about uh, a lot of women wanting to have an orgasm just to please their partner and make their partner happy. Mm. What would be your top tips and tools for overcoming this challenge? And I'm sure this yeah. is something we could talk about for like eight hours. Uh, <laughs> but but if you had to kind of like wrap it up, so give, us, give our listeners some ideas, what, what would that look like? Yeah. So I know for a lot of people, masturbation is the like, oh my gosh, like Charlene, have you said that word out aloud? Oh my gosh, can't believe you said it. But I would always say to people, even if the word masturbation kind of frightens you, you know, you can choose your language. So solo play, you know, your pleasurable time, me time, whatever it may be. But I think it's important for women to have that space to really learn what they enjoy without kind of being put on the spotlight, you know, on, on, on the spot with that spotlight in front of them, you know, that being their partner saying to them, hey, like, what turns you on? Or have you come yet, babe? Have you? Have you come yet, babe? And 
And, you know, one of the chapters in, in my book is that, you know, you know, have you have you come yet? Because there is that whole pressure, isn't there, that your partner feels that they have met your needs when you have had an orgasm. But we know that actually there are lots of people that have orgasms, but it doesn't necessarily mean that sex has been great. Yeah, definitely. And there's the the pressure, even if that partner is not trying to pressure them, you know, just the question like, like, have you come in? Are you going to, are you going to come for me or something? Which is funny. I, so yeah. I like that, like that doesn't work for me, but I like um, orgasm control play where I have partners that are like, I'm I'm going to make you come as many times as I want. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's consensual, everyone, by the way, yes. I can tap <laughs> if I want. And for, there, for me, there's something about that that feels less like you, you must come now and more like you're mine and I yeah. will do what I want with you. And but that's just me. I'm not saying that's for everyone. So but, but yeah. the pressure is like, yeah. it's not it's not good. Pressure is good for G spots, everyone, but not for your mind. Right. Absolutely. And I think the thing is, it's about understanding what does it for you. So there are some women that actually like that kind of coaxing element from their partner where the partner might say something like, you know, go on, you can take it or, you know, I've got you like, you know, that kind of relaxing kind of, you know, I've got you, babe, like just let go. You know, something in that that can feel very sexy and quite a turn on for some women. But I think it's more when it's like, did you come, babe? Mm -hmm. And when you didn't, the partner looking disappointed. And then what you'll then get is that women are then so in their heads trying to kind of um, that they're not allowing themselves to enjoy the sensation, the pleasure. They're not relaxed. They're not enjoying it. And then you get that kind of when Harry met Sally type of orgasm, you know, where you're sort of just screaming and pretending that you're enjoying it and that you've had an orgasm when you actually haven't. I'll have what she's having. <laughs> yeah. And then yes. you remember that? Uh, yeah. That's one of my favorite movies. Like, how do I get one of those? I, I yeah. had to watch the craziest movies yeah. when I was younger, which I love. And I was thinking in my adult years, she did a good job, Meg Ryan. Yeah acting yeah. like she was having an orgasm. I wonder how yeah. many people she slept with. They're like, damn, it it wasn't real when I slept with her that one time. She just proved it. <laughs> well, Absolutely. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, Charlene, too, in the, in the sim same realm with this question that Amy asked with the tips and tools for overcoming these challenges, because the orgasm gap, speaking here specifically, I think, uh, in a lot of uh, terms about heterosexual couples, right? We're talking about penis owners with vulva owners because there mm -hmm. is this orgasm gap that we've talked about in our book. And I'm sure that it's a piece of the challenge when it comes to orgasms for couples, especially in long-term relationships. And yeah. I think a lot of times it is it is a it is something that I, the dude, uh, the penis owner needs to understand. And I think education is a huge piece of that. But do you do you have anything you want to speak on in terms of the orgasm gap, especially when it comes to challenges uh, in this in yeah, the same realm? Absolutely. Realm. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think the thing is that men have learned from society, from school education, from conversations in the playground, wherever it may be, just from society, how to have the best sex, you know, so they know how to come easily. They know, you know, that if their penis is sucked this way, that this is what's going to happen. They they are often quite confident enough to be able to say, actually, no, I don't want to do that. You know, I, I, I don't really go down on, on women. Like I don't, that's not really my thing. And women could be in that position where they're like, actually, I'd really like you to do that, but they wouldn't say it, you know, so they're okay for, for the guys to just say it, that they're happy not to do it. And I, th but I don't think that as women that we have, when we're, we're not as confident to, to be able to really articulate and to say confidently, actually, this is what does it for me. And this isn't what does it for me because society, I don't think has caught up yet. You know, we, we, we're just not in that place yet. Um, things have got better. I think things have definitely got a lot better and, you know, books, you know, like my, my book and other books are out at the moment you know, we're having more conversations so that women feel more confident to say what it is that they want in the bedroom. But I do feel like it's still, to some extent, a man's world. And we're not quite where we need to be with that yet. There's a stat that it varies, I think, per study, but it always is around the same amount of percentage points because it's 80 to some people say 90 percent of women need clitoral stimulation and can't Organi organize, organize, <laughs> organize, can't, can't, be, can't An orgasm. orgasm from penetrative sex alone. Uh, I yeah. know that I'm one of those people, especially sex is obviously always shifting and changing and evolving uh, mm -hmm. in terms of your body. However, that's something I think if a lot of men in relationships with women could understand that, whoa, just putting my 
my penis inside of their vagina isn't going to automatically make them orgasm. They Wait, probably porn need. wasn't right. No, Damn. it wasn't. That's what Tommy uh, about. Sex. And that's something that I think if you can embrace that, that'll help the uh, bridge the orgasm gap. And that's like why I think a lot of uh, folks are starting to understand that. And that's why your book exists. Our podcast exists. And I will mm -hmm. say, I think in terms of advice too, what about warming up your partner? If you are in a relationship, right, with a woman and you have mm. this orgasm challenge, which happens a lot and you're in your head about it and you're with your partner, giving them the space to not be in their head and be like, I'm with you no matter how long it takes. And then using toys or something right before that's yeah, we're going to get yeah. to toys. We are. Okay, yeah, good. we're going to the toys. Yeah. 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 Hold your horses. I will. Yeah. I will. And just <laughs> the patience, I think, is key. So I love that. Um, I love that we're already talking about the key pieces prior, but foreplay is everything. Okay. Blood flow. Blood flow. <laughs> Absolutely. But also foreplay starts before you get into the bedroom, right? So mm -hmm. foreplay can start earlier in the morning. And I always give my clients the example, my own personal example. Many moons ago, I was in a relationship with a guy who didn't really quite understand foreplay. You know, he didn't quite know what the, the female body needed, let's say. And I remember every morning he would have a shower and every time he got out of the shower, there would literally be a tsunami of water that would come out and follow him, right? And it would be all, all on the on the bathroom floor. And obviously that was really frustrating. Now, somebody that was maybe emotionally mature would say, you know what, babe, I'm really sorry that that's bothered you. You know, I just forget sometimes. But his reaction was so negative all the time that actually it meant that I drew sort of further away from him, you know, and didn't really want to be intimate with him. Because you, oftentimes you don't want to be close to someone who's not respectful of what you're saying, where you don't feel heard or listened to. So fast forward to the bedroom, you know, he's sort of tapping me and saying, hey, babe let's have sex. And I, I just don't want to. And I think it's understanding some of those bits as well, that you can make your partner feel turned on throughout the day by listening to them, by winking at them, by holding their hand, by giving them compliments. There's so many other things that you can do. But sometimes there are less obvious ones as well, like making them feel protected or you know, defending them, you know, in an argument when they're arguing with someone, let's say, and and you just feel that your partner's really by your side. Sometimes it's those little things that make you look at your partner and think, okay, mm -hmm. you cut me. That, that's yeah. really sexy. You know, I think some of the people miss out on those things. But of course, foreplay in terms of touching, kissing, sucking, fingering, taking your time, you know, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. And what I would say is this, and I don't want to man bash because I absolutely adore men, but, but what I would say is that sometimes for guys in heterosexual relationships, they can, they know that the woman wants foreplay. So they do like the three seconds of like the, the touching and the rubbing and the kissing. Mm -hmm. And then within moments, you know, you just feel that penis inside of you and you just don't feel ready quite for mm -hmm. it at that point. And I think it's men just understanding kind of when the right time is and for them to also enjoy the build up. Yeah, totally. And just be, you know, you have a penis. And if you're having sex with someone who has a, a vulva vagina, you know, your bodies are different. Just like the right. you know, you're, you have a penis and someone else has a penis, your penises are different. So it's just staying in tune with that with your partners. And it could be different for that partner. You know, two days later, they're able to like all of a sudden they want your cock in right away. And then two days after that, they don't because we're always changing yeah. every minute. So um, learning the skills of how to change with within with your partner, you know, read the room and also communicate as well throughout it. Um, maybe bringing foreplay also like one thing for me is I'm a big kissing person um, and so if we kiss in the beginning but then while we're having sex you, we're not kissing it's like really confusing and jolting for me I feel like I and I like being a piece of meat but I like being a worship piece of meat so, so like continuing <laughs> foreplay throughout it so with that, I want to dive deeper into masturbation. Dun, okay. dun, dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> we call it baiting yeah, sometimes. sometimes. Okay. Sometimes we call it baiting. Yeah. Because well, and yeah. one of the so we're talking a lot about like partnered play, right? Um, in overcoming challenges there. And I mean, one of the pieces to to learning more about your orgasm, whether you've had one or never had one, or you want to amp amp up your orgasm play is understanding your body. So, and I don't know if you've heard of omgs.com, but we are, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. you have, yeah. So we're huge fans of omgs.com yeah. for, as, for um, as a teacher for different touch techniques. Mm -hmm. I personally learned a lot more about different things I could try on my pussy um, that I never would have thought of them, like swirls and tapping. And it's just been a game changer for us. So 
what advice do you have for people who are either brand new or want to up their masturbation game? Like what kind of tools would you suggest in that that journey, the beginning of that journey? Mm -hmm. So I think the first thing that I would say is when you're thinking about masturbation, think about the word that you want to use for masturbation. So in the UK, the kind of slang word we will say is wanking. I don't know if you guys use the word wanking as well. Yeah, yes, but do. yeah. <laughs> okay. So we use that word quite a lot. I personally find that it doesn't do much for me, the word wanking. In fact, it can make me feel a bit like, ooh, maybe I'm a little bit too clinical and I use the word masturbation. But I think it's important to know what word you want to use first and foremost. In terms of sex toys, I would say to try out different types of sex toys to see what works, but take the pressure off yourself in terms of what your expectations are. And the reason why I say this is because I remember a client saying to me, okay, Charlene, You've said to me that sex toys are great ways to, to turn yourself on and to have an orgasm. I'm like, yeah. And then she tried one of the vibra uh, the clitoral stimulators. You know, the one that sort of does that kind of like sucking, suction kind of yeah, motion around, around the clitoris. Yeah. Yes, right, yeah, around okay. the clitoris. And so she, she was like, Charlene, I've tried it and it hasn't worked. And I said to her, well, when you tried it, what was... What were you thinking at the time? What was the environment like? And what she described was a situation where her kids were outside the room. Her partner was downstairs. The neighbours could hear any noise oh that was made in the, yeah. bedroom, in the bedroom. And then from a fantasy point of view, she wasn't really thinking of anything sexy. So I said to her, you know, what would help in those situations when you use a sex toy is to also kind of tap into your, that erotic part of you. You know, think about something that kind of can turn you on. You know, is it a threesome? Is it handcuffs? Is it, you know, someone on top of you, the heaviness of that? Is it sweat? Is it whatever? Is it the heavy breathing? To really kind of like stay in that moment as you're touching yourself or as you're using your sex toy. And of course, it was a game changer once she kind of tapped into that part of herself. So, so I would say, try out lots of different sex toys, see what works, enjoy it, take away the expectation in terms of, you know, well, should I not be having an orgasm now, Charlene? And I think more than anything else, make sure your environment is right, your sort of physical environment, make sure it's suitable. So you can, yeah, really drop in, like maybe not when the neighbors can hear you and your husband's downstairs and the kids yeah. are outside the door. Um, and then <laughs> if you're like, well, I can't find peace and quiet, then like, do you have a bathtub? Because now you have two doors to give you more, more um, a shower, but yeah. no waste water. Or you can even lay on the floor. If you don't have a bathtub, you can lay on the floor in the bathroom, but now you shut your bedroom door and the door to your bathroom. Lay a towel down, get cozy. That's smart. Yeah. yeah. Put the shower absolutely. on screen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> or you can use the shower as a bit of a sex toy as well. Not the actual shower head itself, but in terms of like the water, the mm -hmm. sensation from the water that you know on the clitoris can be really stimulating mm -hmm. i have a weird question that's related to this but it's quick brainstorming okay. question for all three of us what other ways could we call masturbation that maybe wouldn't be wanking or masturbation for people flogging the dolphin isn't that one like fun ones that's not just self-pleasure yeah, that's not just well no that's like fun and funny yeah what about like rubbing one out yeah, rubbing one out. I'm loving that. Did you guys just think about this on the spot? Or all yes, these? I, like, she is. I do, I yeah. do this I've, because... I mean, I that like, is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm what thinking if... solo play. But yeah, no, solo like play, these yeah. Ones. <laughs> Jerk it, jerking the beef tenderloin. Is there something about spanking the monkey or something yeah. like that? Is oh, like a spanking the monkey? Spanking the monkey. Spanking, spanking the, the monkey. monkey. Is it a okay. real question? Okay, Charlene, <laughs> yeah. I just was wondering if you... Wank, wanking the beast. Or wait, taming the beast? I don't know. Okay. Banging the beef? Banging the beef. Banging the beef. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll let that marinate for you in terms of beef. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm loving these. These are great. Vegan beef is good too, everyone. <laughs> so do you did you have any brands or games in terms of master like brands of sex toys or like different masturbation games that you would recommend? So not so much. I think so. I work with different sex toy brands and I always say to people to sort of try out different ones to see what works for you. Because as I said, you know, even like the clitoral stimulator, it doesn't work for, for everyone. A lot of the clients that I work with, I sort of direct them to Sensate Focus, uh, mm -hmm. which, you know, quite a few of us know about in terms of just kind of creating that environment where you massage yourself or, you know, if you're doing it with a partner that you kind of massage each other, you just take time to be more present 
to be more mindful. And then you can incorporate if you want to like sex toys, you know, lubricant oils, et cetera. Um, so I suppose it's more just helping people to kind of get into the mindset of actually you don't always need a partner to feel and to experience sexual pleasure. And actually it really does start with knowing your own body and your own mind as well. And also doing things that you feel comfortable with as well, because I think way too many of us are engaging in sexual activities that we're not really comfortable with and that doesn't really turn us on at all. Yeah. It's so the sensate focus. People could probably look up like a YouTube video on that or something. YouTube has all the like free guided things to to learn and practice. And it's about embodiment then is what I'm it hearing. It won't be explicit because YouTube bans yeah. explicit you content. Do not don't worry sex. about that. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So right? YouTube will have a, a basic version of it. But yeah, ultimately it's about just being mindful, being in the moment and sort of massaging each other. I love that. Okay. So there's a lot of stigma around sex toy use, right? Mm. And especially in partnered situations. And I don't know how many times, and Amy, I don't know if you can talk about this and Charlene, if you, or just mention it, yes or no. Yeah. I've heard uh, people, one or two, one person in a partnership say that, no, I don't need sex toys because then I'm going to get I'm going to be totally useless in my relationship. What? Mm -hmm. like, why would my partner need a sex toy? And they're pretty much anti-sex toys as they think it's going to take away from who they are as a, as a person or what they can do with their bits. Anybody else heard that? Oh yeah, I mean, totally. Literally yeah. all the time. Yeah. Why yeah. would you need that? You have you have me, and I'm like the the sex toy can't like hug me and kiss me. Not yet, and uh, and it's different. And pleasure is pleasure. You know, it's like a bonus to the experiences. Or maybe I do need this, right? At least right now in life. Oh. So what? It's pleasure. I can still engage with you in so many other ways. Yeah, but also in partnered sex, you know, it's about being creative, isn't it? Because you, for example, could be using a particular sex toy on your genitals or on different parts of your body, because we know that, you know, there are um, lots of other erogenous stones on, on our bodies that are really quite sexually stimulating. So you could be using the sex toy on the part of your body that you know it where it really does it for you. And your partner could be kissing other parts of your body, touching other parts of your body. For some partners, the visual of watching you use a sex toy can be quite a turn on as well. And then they want to join in as well and, and add their bits. So I think it's about um, really taking away the this kind of stigma around sex toys and and just enjoying sexual experiences, you know. Um, but in saying that, and this is what I say to a lot of clients, I will absolutely always recommend sex toys. I think they are the best like invention like ever made, but they're not for everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's also okay. I, Amy's going to ask you a true or false question. And I will just give you a, a shameless share real quick that I thought I was addicted to my magic wand. Do you have magic wand over there? You do, right? We do. Yes, it is, indeed. And it I is, do. We do. I do. <laughs> yes. It's, it is. It's it's so incredible. Yeah. And I have all, all the sizes. And it's been my favorite <laughs> toy since I worked at a retail shop uh, that Amy and her mom still own. They own the, the online version now. But it's called the magic wand. It's like the mini is my new favorite because it's mm -hmm. tinier and I can bring it with me. And mm -hmm. I thought that I was addicted to my magic wand. So... Amy, I, I don't know if she's ever been addicted to toys, maybe, but true or false, Charlene, tell us the truth. Can well, you become addicted to your sex toy? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's really, Is it it's true? Really <laughs> Do you know what? There's no research that suggests that you could become addicted to your sex toy. However... I do feel that we have to be mindful if we are in love with our sex toy and we bring it everywhere and it's, it's part of our sexual play that we get excited to wake up just for it, you know, just to use it, et cetera, that if you've got a partner that they might feel a little bit redundant. Um, so it's, it is about being mindful. Also, if your body is used to the vibration of the sex toy, if you've got a routine that your body and mind is used to, to get you to the big O, then it might be the case that when you then have partnered sex, that your body's like, hey, this isn't a stimulation that I'm used to. So I think just do a bit of both, you know, like have the most fun with your sex toy. But if you have a partner, also make sure that you have some like exhilarating, stimulating moments with them too, mm -hmm. so that your body's just on fire with both experiences. 
Yeah, it's like a it's like a balance. And I've totally had times in my life where I thought I was, was addicted to it. And addicted wouldn't be the word for me. Like I wasn't affecting my everyday life. You know, I wasn't like, yeah. I'm not going to work because I'm at home <laughs> with my vibrator. And so it was more like I can't have sex or orgasms without this. And mm-hmm. so I was still having pleasure because I had a sex toy. Uh, but I did what you said, right? Like had to diversify the touch and play. It kind of reminds yeah. me of my sleep issues where if I get used to something like medicating my sleep, that makes it easier to sleep. Then for a while after that, I will, my brain will just be kind of hooked on that. And it's hard to not take that thing, whatever it is, if it's weed or whatever else it is. Um, and yeah. then it just takes a little while. Maybe I won't sleep super well for a couple of nights, but I have to kind of like wean myself off of it. And the ba- the balance for me is to diversify sleep with falling asleep without something with something that like a light something a heavier something depending on the time and on the sex toy note so april's talking about her favorite the magic wand which now um, she loves the magic wand mini Uh, my favorite too uh, toy is uh, the premium womanizer premium two and i as i'm more of an air pulse suction person and for anyone listening who wants to try any of these toys if you go to purepleasureshop.com this is only in the us only Mm -hmm. uh, use coupon code shameless september 24 this is in only the month of 20 or sorry of september 2024 i use that coupon code shameless september 24 you get 20 percent off all of our that's april and amy's faves in the april and amy's or shameless sex faves category wait shameless and it's sex timber so so take out the p replace it with an x yeah because that's funny they're starting that like now you can go, on, you, can go on the, yeah, you can go in the show notes and shoot out one there to the bigger one because i don't use air pulse technology that's the, is the size that, of my hand it's not huge no, no. i'm thinking but it's like bigger because i've seen the smaller ones yeah it's like it's the like their one. average their main size okay. it's like the, the the kind of classic size so it's not super small but it's not big like a magic wand and i can have orgasm after orgasm after or, orgasm <laughs> that thing it does not desensitize me and i love using it during sex, like I, yes. it's like as a for partner play. So, um, okay, here's another true or false for you. Are you ready? Are you ready for it? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. If, if you don't use it, you lose it. Speaking of sex drive and libido. <laughs> yeah, do you know, I? Th- there's no truth in that. There's no truth in that. You know, there are times where we may be a single and we are not having as much sex as we would probably want to have, and then you meet a partner. And the novelty of it, you know, it's new, it's unpredictable, it's exciting, and it kind of brings out something different in you, brings out the sex beast in you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's no truth in that at all. I think the one thing that could happen for people, like we see this in long term relationships, right? Yeah. Like we, you know, you and your partner, maybe you had kids and now you're not having sex for like six months to a year, maybe, or maybe it's six, who knows? But it's like the yeah. longer you get stuck in this mindset of not being a sexual person, the harder it is to get back in it later. But it doesn't mean you lost it. You're just disconnected from it, right? Yeah. And I think what happens as well is that when people get together, so that kind of honeymoon phase is very exciting. It's very new, you know, quite unpredictable. You can't wait to rip each other's clothes off. And then you live together and you see the real person, you know, the person that, you know, goes to the toilet and the toilet doesn't smell very nice or they're not very tired. You're very clean. The 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 seat's Some dribble. There's some dribble. (laughs) Yeah. All all those types of things that are just not so sexy. And then other priorities take priority. So in terms of like children or issues with finances, maybe you're moving home or whatever it may be. And we know, of course, if you're stressed, then that impacts your sexual libido, right? So that impacts your sex drive. So what I would say is that you have to be quite intentional when you're in a relationship to keep the spark alive. Now, when I say to couples that in the same way when you're at work, you have regular sort of check-ins, whether it's weekly or fortnightly, to just assess what's going on at work so that you can do the best possible job. You kind of have to do that in relationships as well. You know, find regular time that you can connect to bring back that spark, to make it exciting. So you know, I always talk about date nights. Sometimes people start date nights and then they kind of forget about it. And they're like, oh yeah, we should do that again. But it's about bringing the playfulness and the fun back into your relationship. And then you start to see your partner in a different way. You start to see them in a way where you're like, oh, actually fancy you. And yeah, you're really funny. Or, you know, I think it's bringing it back to that again. Sometimes we lose the playfulness in relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Prioritizing pleasure right? Prioritizing Absolutely. pleasure. It doesn't always have to be about sex. It can be just about connecting, which is yes. something that I think gets lost in the, in de- when we domesticate with someone living children, when you, again, you have to deal with 
just everyday life stuff that isn't sexy mm-hmm. where it's like, Hey babe, you can pick up the kid. Hey babe, I'm right. You, I, who's going to the grocery store or yeah. who? So there's just, and, and, and life is hard and life sometimes isn't sexy. So yeah. wanting to make nice, sexy time with your partner, that's maybe driving you nuts. Cause they never make the bed and, and you're doing all the things and you're like, Hey, not only do I not want to fuck you right now, I also <laughs> Really don't want to even see you right now. My partner and I too have two different times of day where we like to get down, which I was going to ask you about because morning sex Mm -hmm. isn't usually my forte. I figured out a tool for this, April. Uh, what? By the way, okay, uh, extra yes. shots of espresso. <laughs> it, it probably I, it might apply to you, but okay. So I so I have sleep issues, and so sometimes if I wake up at like four or five a.m., one of my tools for trying to go back to sleep is um, not just like you know counting sheep. I do uh, erotic fantasies in my in my mind while I'm laying in bed. I'm not yeah. masturbating or touching myself, but I'll like play with like telling erotic stories, and it and I end up kind of falling asleep. But what happens usually? Number one is I start to dream about the thing that I just started to create in my mind, and then two when I wake wake up and my partner wants to have morning sex, I'm already kind of turned on. And if, you, if you're not someone who wakes up at like five or six, like me, you could wake up and be like, babe, I need like five to 10 minutes and, and then get into your erotic fantasy world. And then you engage from that place. Yeah. Got me a clip on real good. <laughs> I think that's a really, really good, good um, example of ways that you can kind of negotiate this kind of the difficulties or the differences when it comes to I suppose different I suppose different sex drives in a way in terms of kind of when you want to do it and when and when your partner wants to do it usually there's a way that you can have a bit of sort of common ground or a bit of um, a compromise where you can find times where it works for both of you so for some people if you work from home or your partner works from home you can have sex during the day and that could work for the two of you some people they want to wait till like Friday evenings or the weekends as well because they know that's going to be great but it might just be if morning sex isn't for you there might be times just for the sake of your you know your partner that you might sort of have a bit of a quickie just to kind of you know make them happy unless you're absolutely I totally just did that the other day Mm -hmm. I was like don't (laughs) bother touching my clit just stick it in me here's some I'm not even kidding I was like it's fine and it it felt good after a while but no I wasn't it wasn't a a hard no I was like well fine I'm not doing anything half asleep still I was half asleep so I was just wanting your feedback I like this I like this advice yeah Um, but there might be times where it's a firm no right like there might be times where you just don't feel like you're really sleepy and Mm -hmm. I think it's it's just kind of been able to have that flexibility in your relationship, isn't it? And it sounds like you found you found that in your relationship. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And sometimes that shifts where I wanted at night and he's like snoring passed out. And then I think uh-huh. daytime is a good is a good one for me. And for other people that that have that uh, flexibility to the daytime sex is it can be really hot. Yeah, that's really exciting. The world is working and you're having sex. It's like, yeah, that could be quite sexy. Oh, I, I love this. So I can't wait to read your book because I can't believe that you say everything you ever wanted to know. I love this because that is a <laughs> lot. And I believe it yeah. though from you because you are such an, an incredible speaker and you're so knowledgeable and so smart. And where can we buy your book? Because I know you're based in the well, UK, can, but I'm sure it's for, for oh, everywhere. Oh, oh, no, no, buy, oh. Can you tell us yes. more about it first? Oh, like, yeah. like explain oh, yes. like more so just because we haven't read it, but like so our listeners have a better picture of what you're but what, just want to buy it. No, <laughs> no, tell us more. I, I need to buy it before, but like let's learn about it. And then <laughs> yeah. 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 I never yeah. we'll get there soon, Chip. We'll get there soon. <laughs> so I always start by saying that there is a whole chapter called Dear Men. And I made sure that that was in there because I was told that usually men don't buy books linked to sex. Um, they may listen to podcasts, they may listen to like audio books, but they don't actually buy books, which I don't know if it's true or not. Um, but I thought if there's a dear men section in there, then partners who have men as, as a partner, they will hopefully encourage them to read it. So that is basically helping uh, men to understand the issues around around sex. So with what things that might go on in their relationships, so issues around erectile dysfunction, ejaculation issues, issues around addiction and porn. And also if they're in a heterosexual relationship, just things that a woman might enjoy, you know, things for them to consider you know, making the effort, you know, romance isn't dead, you know, there's, there's something in, you know, making a bit of effort from a romance point of view. And then the rest of the book is really about literally everything about sex. So orgasms, sex toys, um, our sexual journey and our sexual history and how that impacts who we are and what we enjoy and just understanding where we come from. So there's, so at, 
at the end of each chapter, there's like an intimacy activity that you can do. And whether you're single or whether you're in a relationship, there's a task that you could that you can do that's suitable for you. And one of the tasks in there is a sex quiz where it's it's a time for you to sort of sit back and answer questions around your own sexual journey, your sexual history. And, you know, as a sex therapist, this is something that I'm used to doing all the time, reflecting on my own sexual world. But for your average person, a lot of people just don't do this. So the feedback that I've got about the book is lots of couples have listened to it because it's also an audio book. So a lot of couples have listened to it as part of date night. And that's been really helpful for them. And a lot of single people, because although that is kind of mainly aimed at couples, a lot of single people have really found it really fascinating as well. So, yes. That's pretty, uh, that's me trying to give sort of a short summary of, of the book. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And now Chip wants to know, where do we buy your where book? Buy and it? also you have other offerings, right? It's not just this book. So you, you, you work with people. So how can people find you, work with you, buy your book, all the things and everyone from what you're going to hear, we will have the link in the show notes, but tell us more. Yeah. Yeah. So my book um, is available in America now, which is fantastic. So you can get it on like Amazon in particular. Um, I, I'm told to say an all good bookstores. And that's when you don't know any of the other bookstores in America. But I know that Amazon is like worldwide. So you can definitely get it on, on Amazon. But of course, if you Google search, come closer, Charlene Douglas, you'll also find it. And it'll tell you everywhere you can get it in, in America. Um, it's terms of where to find me. So Instagram is probably the most reliable space, Charlene Douglas official. Um, but on my website, website there are lots of resources on there lots of information about sex and intimacy lots of blogs lots of information on there um in particular there's two there are two webinars that people can buy and have like lifetime access one of them is about if you've got like a low sex drive things that you can try um, there's lots of information on there. In fact, there's even, I'd probably say that I thought that I had all the information that I could possibly have in in the book, but there's even more on that mm-hmm. in, in, in that webinar as well. And then the other one's about the menopause. So, you know, navigating uh, your sex drive when it when it comes to the menopause as well. So that webinar is also on my website. So the intimacycoachuk.com is where you can find lots of information. I love this. I also need to introduce you to Hot Octopus Toys because uh, they're based in London and uh, you would love their products. So I'll I'll have to send you. OK, so my guess, South yes. East London. Close. So it's East London. Mm-hmm. That was close. Yes. Okay. That I, was yeah. I, I knew, okay. I knew it was East, but I was like, maybe Southeast because there's some, okay. Yeah. Hmm, I was close. What, what part? Yeah. Tell me so I can So kind of Ilford area. So okay. it's like, that's like proper East London. Oh yeah. That but in saying East. that, because I've traveled uh, quite a bit as well, I feel like my accent's a little bit mixed as well. So okay. there's a bit of Essex in there. That's where I was I lived... getting Essex a bit. That's why I was like Southeast. Yeah. So I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. That was good. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. That was good. Uh, yeah. Well, I just, I, I adored listening to all of your insight and thank you for being on the show. I know our listeners are going to love this. Check out Charlene Douglas's book, everyone. And if the show is out in the US, uh, check that yeah. out too. So she's the author of Come Closer, everything you ever wanted to ask a sex and relationship therapist, which that is endless and amazing. And I'm so grateful for this tool. And you can also check out uh, her on Married at First Sight, the UK version, which I'll Google and find out where that is. I think I saw the Lifetime on on Amazon. doesn't matter. Uh, I I, I (laughs) want to see more of you because you're fabulous. It's probably time for you to go to bed since you're eight hours ahead of us. So (laughs) uh, we won't keep you up much longer. Uh, To all of our listeners, thank you for being a part of our Shameless Sex community. We absolutely adore you. Remember, we launch an episode every single Tuesday and your reviews mean everything. We are everywhere podcasts are listened to. So if you haven't reviewed us, go ahead and review us. I look at all the reviews now sometimes and sometimes people are mean and fuck yourselves and sometimes people are nice and I love you. And the people <laughs> that are mean, that's okay. Yeah, your opinions are everything to some other people. So we still appreciate that. Right, Amy? Totally. They didn't like our body suits. Too and bad. They love our information and they love our guests. Um, no, we have tons, tons of five stars though. And uh, we we will keep doing this as long as we are breathing. So uh, we appreciate you. Charlene? Ciao for now to all of our listeners. Ciao. Ciao for now.